Now that you have a teleprompter, you likely feel that you have a safety net because you can read lines and not have to memorize or recite and repeat. Does that mean you're going to be engaging and interesting and that the viewer won't click away from your video in under 10 seconds? Here are seven tips on how to be more engaging on camera with a teleprompter. Let's dive in now. Tip number one, don't overuse the teleprompter. If you need to produce some short messages and it's something that you're very familiar with and you, you don't have a struggle to know how to communicate the message and you're confident, then sure, you don't need to use the teleprompter. After all, you want the natural you to come out and if it's just coming out naturally, it doesn't get better than that. However, if you have longer material to communicate, you know, like a course or a video sales letter or other training material, then obviously to be accurate and, and go through all the material, it's not practical to be memorizing. So you're obviously going to want to use a teleprompter. So I'm just saying, be careful not to, you know, let the teleprompter be your crutch to use it all the time because there may be many situations in shorter videos that you just don't need it. But that all said, if you're a nervous Nelly, it's there for you. You don't have to memorize. You can just find your way to get relaxed and the teleprompter's your friend, ready there with your script and available for you to read. So be careful, you have options and just be wise in how you use the teleprompter. Tip number two, manage your inner critic. If you're like me, you may have this little thing that enters your brain through the side door and throws all this doubt and confidence crashing stuff at you. Like you're not worthy, you're not capable, you suck on camera. Well, the reality is you're not going to get anywhere if you can't manage that guy. You need to get rid of the ego that's being a baby that wants to keep you stuck in your comfort zone and be you know not trying anything new and you know like being a kid that doesn't go outdoors to an adventure um, you know or explore he just wants you to sit and do nothing and if you stick stuck stay stuck <laughs> in that mode you're not going to get anywhere so you need to get that little guy your ego baby to go take a hike because you got business to take care of. If you want to get comfortable with that on-camera you, you're going to need to tell him to take a rest, get the courage up, and do it. And by going out and practicing and putting in that effort and putting at bay that inner critic and the resistance you have to sort of, uh, you know, putting it at bay and just go forward, you're going to be a lot better off. And the more you do it, the easier it's going to be to let that inner critic stay out of your picture altogether. So go for it. Tip number three, adjust your energy for the life-sucking force of the camera and teleprompter. It's already tough enough staring a camera lens in the eye, but now when you add a teleprompter on top of that, it's like you're staring at Darth Vader with text lines scrolling across his face. It can be daunting. So what you need to do is accept the fact that you're looking at this inanimate object and you need to get over it. Pretend you're like Tom Hanks in the movie Castaway where he befriends an inanimate volleyball and he names him Mr. Wilson and he embraces him and he has a dialogue with him. You can do this. Let go of the resistance around dealing with this inanimate object Allow yourself to be you, and if you can let go of that resistance, then you'll be able to focus your energy on giving more of a passionate delivery and, and, and be more present. If you get that in order, you're gonna help things go to the next level. Tip number four, allow yourself to be vulnerable and share some of your backstory. What really makes you succeed on camera is being unique, being you. You want to be different. So it's okay that we share our vulnerabilities and some of our backstory as it's applicable to help with whatever messaging we're trying to give a, to get across. If 
you show a more vulnerable side to you, people are going to connect more with you. They're going to feel you're more real, more authentic. They don't want to connect with some kind of false persona or some person in a robo robotic fashion reading uh, a script that is not connected with their message. The more you that you can be, the better you're going to come across on camera. So that's very important and it's probably much easier to portray you than it is to portray someone else. So be you and you'll again take it up a notch. Tip number five, should I inject a little humor into my delivery? Well, I think that depends. If you're pretty good at delivering humor, then great. Everybody loves a joke and loves to laugh and be entertained. But if you're more serious and too straight, maybe you just can't deliver a joke. So that doesn't mean there's anything wrong because the people want to connect with who you are. Maybe you're great at the facial expressions or enunciation or you have a beautiful voice or you're good with your hand gestures and other body movements. They just want to connect with you, whatever that real you is. And if that real you can put some humor in and it's appropriate, that's great. If it's not, don't despair. Whatever you do, don't give up. Don't let the little child or fear in you stop you from being an energetic and passionate you on camera. So it's okay to be you, whatever that is. Just try to have your energy up and project and you'll go in the right direction. Tip number six, practice, practice, practice. The more you practice and rehearse, the more you're going to be comfortable on camera. And that will help you put the inner critic away that may come out and, you know, challenge you on whether you're worthy and how good a job you're going to do. So practicing can take many forms. For example, while you're writing the script, you may want to practice your delivery and you may decide you don't need a script, but practicing while you're actually creating, you're, you're knowing what way you want to present and get the message out. So that's one way of practicing. Another way is to practice in front of the mirror. So when you practice in front of the mirror, you can see how expressive you are. You can try to communicate the lines um, without reciting them word for word and just doing them naturally. So, you know, the mirror is, is, is a great friend for doing that. You may also want to record what you're doing and listen to how it sounds, see how you enunciated things and how you communicated, you know, so no matter what, if you practice, you're going to come off likely more professional and polished. And when you do that, it's going to help you build the confidence and ensure a better quality delivery and performance when you're on camera, like I am right now. So practice, practice, practice. Tip number seven, how far should I be positioned from the teleprompter? First, you want to be sure that the camera lens is centered in the teleprompter, whether you're using a compact video camera, a DSLR camera, a tablet, or a smartphone to do the recording. You need to be sure that the lens is in the center of the teleprompter so that you're getting the right framing in your picture. Now, generally speaking, the larger the teleprompter and the larger the font, the further away the teleprompter can be from the person. It's all about how far away does it is it so that you can read it effectively. If it's too far away, the person trying to read may not be able to see it so well and they may become rigid and then it's going to look ridiculous. If the teleprompter is too close, then you're going to see, you know, side to side eye movement and that's not going to work either. Generally speaking, there's a proximity formula that shows that if you're using something like an iPad mini, that you know, a good distance is about 1.7 feet away from the teleprompter. If you're using a regular iPad, it goes up to about four feet. And of course, if you're using a smartphone, the, the screen area surface is the smallest, you'll need the teleprompter to be the closest in order for you to be able to read it. So that's one variable. The second variable that's very important is based on that proximity that you have to be for you to be able to read what the, the prompt prompter app is showing you, the lens that's recording you 
also has to be able to suit getting the, the frame size that you want for your recording. So if I'm up close and the camera doing the recording is a DSLR and you know I'm using my iPad mini and it's just a couple of feet away and I have a 50 millimeter lens on my DSLR, well I'm barely going to get my head in the, in the picture so that's not going to work. So in that case, if I'm going to be using the DSLR, I'll need a wide angle lens. So you need to think about that and test things out in your setup, you know, play with those two variables. I know if you're using a smartphone to record and you're just a few feet away, that's all cool because the smartphones typically come with a wide angle lens. So again, you're going to need to play with the setup if you're using a DSLR or a smartphone or a tablet to do the actual recording. You play with the distance of not just the teleprompter but also what you're framing in the lens and once you get those two tweaked you're good to go your setup will be great anyways good luck in using the teleprompter and i hope you enjoyed these tips wow these tips on how to be more engaging on camera with a teleprompter if well practiced will help you launch your video productivity and on-camera performance to another level. If you haven't watched my other video on the best teleprompter and app for iPad, click on the link in the description below. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions about how to perform better on camera with or without a teleprompter, please leave them down below in the comments and I'll help you out if I can. If you're not already subscribed to my YouTube channel, please make sure you click on the subscribe button so that I can produce more videos like this in the future. Also, please share or like this video if you found it of value. My channel focuses on teaching creator skills for video creators, video marketing skills, and how to make more engaging, entertaining, and inspiring videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank <laughs> you.